Hey everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I'm the pastor of Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas. And we are going through the entire book of Revelation here on YouTube. You can go back and find all of our previous lessons, or you can just pick your Bible up and start right here. We're in Revelation chapter 7. We're talking about the protection that God is going to offer uh, those who uh, have received the blood of the Lamb. Uh, we just read chapter 6. So we talked about all the persecution and the trials and the earthquakes and all the terrible things that are coming uh, with the wrath of the return. And now in chapter 7, we're talking about all of the promises that Christians have through God's protection, through His grace. I want to go back just a little bit uh, to what we covered last time. Uh, Revelation 7, starting at verse 9. John says, After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number. This, these, this is a number of people that are in heaven that he's seeing. From every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. So these are the Christians who are in heaven, they're waving palm branches, they're wearing white robes, and they're singing praises to God. Verse 11, And all the angels who are standing around the throne, and all the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne, and they worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. So it's, the scene is so spectacular. It's not just those who are saved and those who are in heaven. It's not just uh, earth people, right? But it's also heaven. Heavenly beings are also doing the same thing. Angels created heavenly beings who, who've never known sin are bowing down with their faces to the ground. The 24 elders are, are, uh, who represent us, saved ones, are bowing down with their faces to the ground. The, the four living creatures, those weird, crazy looking creatures, they are all bowing down with their faces to the ground. Have you ever, have you ever done that when you worshiped? I, I know in church we, we stand when we sing. Uh, some of us are, are brave enough to, to lift our hands to our, at least our shoulder height. And so some of us are super brave and we'll raise our, our hands even higher uh, when we sing. Some of us close our eyes when we sing. Uh, some of us smile because the words make us happy when we sing. How, how many of us have worshipped or prayed in uh, the more humble position? You know, we, I, we tend to put our hands up as, as a way of sending God glory and honor and, and praise, but how, how many of us have also prayed or, or sang worship songs bent over? Like, like these people in heaven, like these created heavenly beings are doing in heaven, falling to the ground and worshiping God with faces to the ground. Have you ever done that? Worshiping God in a humble position with your face to the ground and saying, no, this this... This is where I belong. You know, those, those of you might feel comfortable uh, standing with your hands raised up, but you know, in, in, my, in my heart, it's, it's, too, it's so contrite, it's so, it's so humble. I need, I need to put my face to the ground. This is where I belong. God is so far above me. God is so far above and beyond me. I have to put my face to the floor. Even heavenly creatures do it. We see John do it in the Bible. We see Isaiah do it in the Bible. We see Ezekiel do it in the Bible. So many people in the Bible uh, fall down with faces to the ground. Have, have you done that? Have you worshipped that way? It's, it's not a magical position. I'm not saying that. But it, it's certainly humbling. And I think in the right moment, um, it feels like this is, this is how it should be. That this is my place. I belong down here. I belong with my face to the ground. You know, th this, is a, this is a time in my life when I need to be low because God is high, because God is exalted. And just to say, God, you are incredible. You are incredible. You know, you're, if I were going to show you any more about how high you are above me and how low I am, I would need to put myself through this floor. This is the position that I have to take because this, this is how I feel. 
verse 13. Then one of the elders addressed me. So one of the elders turns to John, taps him on the shoulder and says, who are these clothed in white robes and from where have they come? So this uh, heavenly elder is talking to John and asking him, do you know where all of these people in heaven have come from? And he said, sir, you know. Like, no, I don't know. You tell me. You tell me the answer. And he said to me, these are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So uh, that might raise some questions because uh, you got all those code words, right? Tribulation, blood of the Lamb, white robes. What does it all mean? And, and certainly, this is one of those passages that I think gets studied and over-examined and uh, everyone has their own uh, interpretation of what this might be. There are those that believe that this is uh, people who lived during this great persecution time and they, and they died uh, naturally or unnaturally. Uh, there are those that believe these are martyrs. You know, when Christianity became illegal and you had to receive the mark of the beast to buy and sell and people didn't, then of course uh, people were put to death for their faith. It could be them. There's others that would say, well, no, these are just the, everyone who's in heaven, right? These are the millions of people who've lived and died and, and lived before this time. But notice verse 15. It says, therefore, they are all before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of living water and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. So again, chapter seven, more promises, more promises, right? And and in heaven, this is where we say there's, there's no more tears, right? No more tears in heaven, no crying, no suffering in heaven. God says, these people are now under my protection. These people in heaven now belong to me And suffering will never touch them again. He says they'll never hunger again. They'll never thirst again. He he says they'll never get sunburned again, right? No more crying. No more tears. So does it matter where they came from? Does it matter who these people are? If they're just the people that have lived on the earth, if they're just the millions of Christians who've always believed, or if they're the martyrs, does it matter who they are? The important thing that to take away from this. It's not who the people are, but it's how they are now in heaven. Now they are protected. Now they are sealed. And that's the promise. This is the promise of Revelation because, you know, as we near the end of the Bible and we near the end of the story, the, the beginning of the story in Genesis was about how God was going to save these people. How is God going to redeem the world? How is God going to fix the, the murder of um, Adam and his family? How is God going to fix uh, the sinfulness of these different patriarchs that, that came down through Abraham's line? How is God going to fix all of that? Well, he sends his son, Jesus. Well, Jesus saves us by the cross, but you have to get all the way to Revelation to see how the end plays out. And God says the end plays out with people in heaven are now protected and sealed and they will never be hurt or harmed again. They will never uh, know hunger. They will never know thirst. They will never know sadness. So so this is the promise for you, right? Who, who, Who are they talking about in heaven? John is looking at you. John's looking at me. He's looking at us. This is our promise. This is our takeaway. We will no longer be persecuted. We will no longer suffer. You know, and I think right now, um, you know, I'm recording this in 2020 and we hear all these rumors about how bad the world's going to get, right? As we head into the election, even people are talking about, oh, if you vote this way, the world's going to be terrible. If you vote this way, the world's going to be terrible. And, uh, you know, have you seen this? Oh, look, you know, one day Christianity is going to be illegal and one day we're going to be persecuted for our faith and you know it's not popular to be a Christian anymore and the world's only getting worse and you know we're going to be uh, you know losing our jobs and people are going to get sick and die and they're going to suffer and you know other religions are on the rise and Christianity is becoming you know more and more non-politically correct and the, the things that Christians hold to their ideals are getting voted out 
you know, and I would just say stop. Stop, 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 stop all of that worrying. In fact, stop this conversation. Please stop all this conversation. All, all the worry, all the posts, all the Facebook posts uh, the, about, you know, ooh, the boogeyman's coming if we do this. The boogeyman's coming if we do that. The worry. It, it does not show your trust in God. It does not show your faith in God. You know, read the end of Revelation and what does it say? It says the Christians are protected. They are covered. They are saved by what? By the blood of the Lamb. When everyone else is left on the earth and they are crying and they are hungry and they are sunburned, th- th- those are the people that I'm worried about, not Christians. Can the Christians stop complaining? Can we stop worrying? Can we stop posting articles of fear? And can we start trusting God? Because it's his world, right? And everything that takes place on this world happens according to his will. So whatever happens this year, next year, the year after that, 10 years after that, everything that will take place is part of God's design and it is his will, right? We're praying your kingdom come on earth, right? As it is in heaven. God's in control. So what's my job? My job is, as the famous hymn says, to trust and obey because there's no other way. And I turn from my own sin. That's my job here on earth. I turn from my own sin and I follow Christ. It's not my job to convict the world of sin. The Bible doesn't say it's your job to convict the world of sin. It's the Holy Spirit's job. It's not your job. My job is to work on my own sin and to help others find the cross. That's your job. Not to worry, not to panic, not to spread panic, not to spread fear. Fear and panic, those are the, those are the deeds of the devil. And if you are an instigator, if you are spreading fear and panic and worry and doubt, <sighs> ask yourself if, if you trust. You trust God. Because because clearly chapter 7 says, only the Lamb of God saves, right? Chapter 7 says, only the Lamb of God is what puts people in heaven. And those that are left on the earth will continue to be hungry and starve and be sunburned and suffer. But those who are in heaven were saved because of their white robes that have been washed with the blood of the Lamb. Those who are left on earth will be whom God hates. Because God hates sin. And so while I'm down here on earth, the only job that I have that matters is to assist the Holy Spirit in finding more people who need Jesus. That's it. The only thing that I can't do in heaven is make more Christians. Because once it's chapter 7, it's done. It's over. Please stop worrying about the earth. Stop worrying about the election, the future, America. Stop. Stop. Stop trying to protect what's yours. Stop worrying about your meager possessions. Stop worrying about your retirement. Stop worrying about your bank account. The only thing that matters is not the economy, okay? The only thing that matters is what takes place before the wrath of the Lamb is poured out on the world. And adding to that number that John is looking at in heaven. That's the only thing that matters between now and then is adding to that number. If anything should scare you, the only thing that should scare you is the number of people right now who don't know Jesus. And that's the job of the church to add to that number. I love you guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.